I do a little bit, my wife and I, uh, amateur bird watching. We have a bunch of bird feeders out in the yard and we get all kinds of birds. We get uh, the finches, the sparrows, we even get bluebirds on a cold day in the winter because they keep a heated bird bath out there. And we get different types of woodpeckers, mockingbirds, uh, you name it, cardinals, doves, like I said, all kinds of finches, tufted titmice, chickadees, and uh, that's pretty much what we see here. I'm in 10 of 11 children, six sisters and four brothers, so it made us 11. And uh, I grew up in the city of Reading, born January 20th, 1939. I went to Central Catholic High School and uh, I, entered, I entered the Navy eight days after I graduated from Central Catholic High School with four other classmates. And um, I went to basic training, which is boot camp, they call it, in Bainbridge, Maryland. And, and then I went to temporary duty in New Orleans, Louisiana, and then I wound up going to a, a Class A Navy communication school in Imperial Beach, California, where it lasted a good six months. And it was tough. 85 was the passing grade, and you had to maintain that passing grade all the time. After school, I went aboard an APD uh, in San Diego. I served in there and up in communications. I was on the ship for two years, and we had a six month Westpac cruise, as we call it, Western Pacific. And we, I saw half the world and back. All the friendly countries or our allies in the Western Pacific. A couple trips to Hawaii while we were there. We were, I was in Formosa. I was in the Philippines several times. I was in Indonesia. Um, different islands in Japan. There's numerous islands they have. I was at most of those where they had a port. And... Uh, it was, it was an experience because I, I was so young and uh, it's a good life. And here's some pictures at sea where we're either highlining, sometimes you trade movies, you, sometimes you get supplies from another ship and you do get mail from home. This is a picture loading up troops loading up Marines on our one of our bigger transports in Okinawa. Here's a picture one of my buddies scarfed this drink milk sign and here's some of our these are Marine recons we're having a mock invasion over there in Formosa which I'll show you the picture then Anyway, here's some pictures of this landing operation with the Marines and that. And the ship I was on was the primary control ship, and that runs the, the invasion. Uh, it's very informative. <coughs> this is an a, attack transport, and they can carry over 2,000 troops. So there's a lot of boats they can put in the water. Now today, on some of these types of ships, they have platforms there where they have helicopters and they call it vertical envelopment <coughs> so they can bring the troops in faster. And here's the ship patch which would be on my sleeve on my uniform. And this was the rate patch. It was on my arm. Pay off as a third class. I would have had second class but I got out. They wanted me to stay in. I said, no, no. no. So I would have had one more of these. But uh, so I was in uh, 
say three and a half years in the Navy. But it's a good experience. I never, I never regretted it. It's very good. And I'm very loyal to the Navy to this day. I fly a little fly out front and I have a little a wooden Navy guy holding the flag there. So the flag always flies here at the Lopers. My suggestion this, anyone thinks about going in the service today, I would suggest that they go in as an officer, a commission officer. So in other words, that would entail taking ROTC in college, and then you come out as an ensign, which is a lowest grade of commission officer. Some of the, the duty stations, uh, they, they were very good, but over, over in the Philippines in the summertime, it's incessant heat, and then you get showers in the afternoon, and then the sun comes out, and all this. But it's, it's completely different, and especially visiting these poor countries, you appreciate as Americans how, how fortunate we have it.